Sairam students. Welcome to the online session of English Writing Skills. And today we are going to start with story writing. Those who tell stories rule the world. This proverb attributes the craft of storytelling. With a well-told story, we can help a person see through things in an entirely new way. So students, since you are familiar with the basics of English, writing a story will open up new avenues of expression. So what is story writing? Let me tell you. Story writing is an art. It is the oldest form of written composition. It is a work of imagination that is written in easily understandable grammatical structure. So there are certain guidelines okay, for writing a good story. It's not like you just take a paper and pen and start writing a story. If you follow these guidelines, I'm sure that the story will turn out really well. So what are the guidelines? Let's start with that. Before beginning to write, form a clear idea about the plot. You must know how the story is going to unfold and ultimately how is it going to end. If you can start well, you'll definitely end well. So your story will certainly be a good one if you know what interesting point you have to introduce in the beginning. And the most important thing is you need to have a clear idea about the plot. The second point is adhere to the outline given. That is, neither omit any point given in the outline or distort the order. Do not disturb the order of the points given. Okay, it should not be like the first point has been explained at the end and the last point has been explained in the beginning. So do not distort the order of the points given in the outline. The next point that you need to keep in mind while writing a story is connect the points in such a manner as to come up with a coherent composition. Coherent means there should be a logical composition or else what will happen? The unity of the story as one whole idea will be lost. Okay, which basically means do not deviate from the idea. The next point is you may insert dialogues wherever possible. Okay, certainly this will make the story interesting. However, students remember, these dialogues should be short, lively and interesting and avoid using the same dialogues again and again. The next point, give names to characters, even animals, even they can have names. So these names should be short and interesting. They should be catchy. Okay. Now let your story not be unduly long. No, you keep on dragging the story and the same thing has been repeated in some way or the other. Which makes it really boring. So adhere to the word limit if it is prescribed. Okay. Usually... Uh, word limit is prescribed 150 to 200 words 180 to 200 words so adhere to the word limit okay so that your story does not become unduly long the next point to keep in mind is the importance of the conclusion cannot be overlooked your story should not have a conclusion you know which has been derived in a haphazard manner Okay, it should not be a quick conclusion. It leaves a lasting impact on the reader if the conclusion is not a good one. So give time to introduce, to give a, you know, give time so that you plan a proper conclusion for your story. Give a suitable title. Of course, the title is a must. You may name it after the main character or, you know, the object incident or you can also use some proverb or quotation to give, you can use it as a title to the story. Title plays a very important role in your story. Write the story in the 
past tense. Do remember, the event is not happening now. So, a story has to be written in the past tense. Use short sentences. You know, when you're framing sentences for writing your story, you should frame short sentences. The reason is, if you write long vending sentences, the meaning of what you want to convey might be lost. Okay, the sentence may appear to be confusing or it may not give the desired clarity to the reader. Alright, so you should always use short sentences to write your story. The next point to keep in mind is, do not use slang. Okay, we often use slang or short forms. So, we should avoid such slang while writing a story. We do not write the way we speak. You know, we use the proper language while writing. Always go through your story. This will help you to refine it. Okay, go through your story. Once you have completed with your, once you're done with your story writing, go through, read it again. This will help you to refine it. Okay, make it better. Omit all unnecessary details. Okay, certain sentences which are, which have been repeated or certain sentences which are not required. All those unnecessary things can be removed and thus your story can be refined. If you go through your story after its completion. Also, you can edit the mistakes in punctuation, grammar and, sm uh, and spelling. The last but not the least, mention appropriate moral. Even if not mentioned in the question, you should definitely give a proper moral. You should write the moral of the story. Okay, what is the learning that you take from the story? So you need to write the moral even if it's not given in the question. If the question mentions only about giving the title, giving a title to the story, still you need to write a moral for the story. Now these are the guidelines that you need to keep in mind and this guidelines once followed will definitely help you frame a good story. Now there are certain key elements of story writing. Okay, so what are these key elements? that you need to keep in mind. Okay, guidelines we have already learned. Now certain key elements which are very much essential for framing a good story. So the first one is character. Typically story writing has five key elements and we will go through each of them. So character, the fewer the better. Okay, let me explain you this. A character is someone or something that takes part in actions depicted in the short story. So it, can, it could be a living person, a dead person, a ghost, an imaginary character, a robot, a dog, a toy. Okay, it can be anyone. So unlimited list. This character plays a very important role. And to selecting a character is also very crucial for your story. The second important element is, that means, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the golden rule for selecting characters in story writing is fewer are better. So keep in mind, a story writing would more effectively convey its meaning if it has very few characters. Okay, say one protagonist, one another main, uh, say other, another other is the main character and uh, no supporting or side characters would be ideal. Okay. The more number of characters you introduce, the more complicated the story becomes. Alright, so moving to the second key element of story writing. Time frame and place constitute setting of story writing. The setting is often decorated with description of scenes such as supermarket, village or a playground. It is basically the background of the story. Where is this story being set? So these descriptions, how are they important? They're very important to make the reader immerse in the plot, to get engrossed in the reading of your story. So very importantly, it should be 
appealing to the five senses of the readers. Okay, he should literally feel that he is in the market or he is in that particular village of your story. Third point, that is the third key element, the plot. Plot is like a flesh and muscle of story. Okay, so a plot has a start, it has a body, an end. So all these things should be linked to each other by the events and characters actions. So more creatively you describe and logically you connect the events and actions, the stronger the plot will be. Okay, so plot plays a very important role because it holds the start, body and the end of your story. And all these things should be linked sequentially by the events and characters actions. Now the fourth key element is conflict. See, create conflict and tense atmosphere according to Janet Burroway. So conflict is the fundamental element of fiction because in literature only trouble is interesting. It takes a trouble to turn the great themes of life into a story. Okay, say birth, love, work and death. So conflict is the main problem of the story. Okay, it provides you crucial tension in the story which is very much essential. Last but not the least, the key element of your story, central idea or main belief presented by a story writing is called a theme. Okay, what is the central idea or the main belief that is presented by your story? Now, this central idea is a skeleton or you can say it is a frame of your story that is decorated by plot, setting, conflict, characters. So together all of this will decide the central idea of your story. So students, these are the five key elements that you need to keep in mind while writing a story. So in short, for writing a good story, you need to know your characters. The fewer, the better. You need to make an outline, follow the outline. You need to plan your story well. It should have an extraordinary opening line. The opening line can be a proverb or it can be something that catches the reader's attention. Develop the plot. The plot which is a muscle, which is the uh, you know, main ingredient of your story need to be developed and more time should be invested in developing this plot. Edit. Of course, once the story is ready, you need to edit to avoid or to find out any kind of grammatical uh, errors. Choose a title. Title plays an important role. It can be given on the basis of the characters, on the situations or the incidents presented in your story. This can be decided on even on the lesson that is learned from the story. Okay, obtain feedback. Yes, feedback has to be obtained. So all these things you need to remember while writing a good story. Now, this is the structure of organization. Okay, this is the, uh, you know, this is how the, the developing, this, this uh, graph basically shows developing the plot, how your story progresses. Okay, the progression of your story is given over here. Exposition. Let us, let me tell you something. This exposition or narrative exposition is the insertion of background. Okay, now background information within a story. It can be, uh, say, introducing your reader to a story. Now, how will you introduce your reader to a story? By uh, telling about the character by explaining about the setting of your story and also you can introduce begin the story by uh, introducing some kind of conflict so all this ways of introducing your story presenting your story to the readers is called exposition or narrative exposition the second progression moves i mean your story the next step that you move towards is rising action now, events before the climax. Climax is the next step. But before that, there is some action that takes place. The characters attempt to solve the problem. Okay, when in the initial exposition stage, if there is some conflict that took place, the character will attempt. He will try to find out various ways 
to solve the problem he may fail okay and if he fails what does he do the next turn the next step is the turning point the point of greatest suspense or action you can also say it is the peak of excitement for the story it's when the conflict has been uh, you know it has been uh, it, it has been built as a uh, you can say to an intense high at that time the suspense that is maintained the next step is falling action yes the falling action over here what does it tells us it tells us the action and events that occur after the climax now after the climax maybe the character has learned something out of it some the maybe the character you know he has learned to deal with life or you know after the moment of truth he understood what was his mistake so basically after the climate has been built falling action takes place and here it is like a fallout of the events that took place before the climax the last but not the least is resolution so what is this resolution it is the end of the story it basically brings the story to a natural thought provoking or say a surprising conclusion okay so the end of the story should be really good it should be interesting it should be a stage it should be the stage where the conflicts or problems have come to an end and they are being solved so this is what the entire plot looks like this is uh, the, uh, the, this is what we call as story progression now in short see there is no specific structure of writing a story but there are certain things that you need to keep in mind while writing the while writing a story now what is it a story usually comprises of four to five paragraphs depending on the word limit and the things that you need to keep in mind is context now the introduction you can use phrases like once upon a time long long ago you can introduce some uh, say uh, you can begin your story with some proverbs or quotations the second stage or the second paragraph you may introduce the characters through dialogue narration the third one is plot we already discussed it it is the description of an event accident and the last climax that is end of the story so children i'm um, i'm sure that you are very well aware the format of writing a story there are four to five paragraphs word limit will be any uh, anything between 150 to 200 words and uh, you should always uh, you know write your story by following the guidelines that is mentioned in this video and you will definitely be able to write an interesting story so with this we come to an end of this lecture in the second part of story writing we will learn the different types of questions asked in exam there is no home assignment today however you will get a home assignment in the next period thank you so much